Kane is the transforming jungler. He has his bruiser red form with ridiculous healing, his assassin blue form with stupidly high damage. Pretty much the only thing that Kane players can't transform into is a jungler who has a brain. But I have found a master player who actually plays Kane top. It sounds weird, but after I interviewed him about his strategy, I think Kane Top actually makes a lot more sense than Kane Jungle. Kane Top is a completely different, supercharged champion, with a very strong early game that lets him play like a roaming mid laner, collecting kills around the map, as well as getting a super fast transformation that lets him use some unique strategies to win team fights by himself. This video is sponsored by Porofessor. Porofessor is an overlay app for League that gives you so much information without even needing to tab out the game. In my opinion, it is the best League app as well as the only one I use. I'm incredibly happy to have them as a sponsor for this channel. During champ select, Porofessor automatically finds you the best runes and you can even import pro players runes right to your client. Maybe the most important feature it has, you get to see pro builds as well. You can see the statistically best build from Master Plus as well as what individual pro players have bought in case you want a professional's opinion. Once the game starts, Porofessor scouts your opponents to show you important stats like how good they are at their champion, whether they're auto filled, or even if someone likes to roam a lot so you know to watch out for them. In game you have the Porofessor overlay which updates live as you play, letting you compare yourself with other players in your rank, which helps you figure out which areas you need to improve to climb. Porofessor is completely free, download it from the link in the description. Our player is named Jikumi. Jikumi is a Korean player who discovered Kane Top in Season 8. Kane is actually much less popular in Korea than in the West. Specifically in high elo, Kane jungle is almost unplayable in Korea due to their fast paced games. This player would study at school from early in the morning to 11pm at night and then rush home to play solo queue. Even while he was doing this intense study schedule, Jakumi was dedicated to Kane jungle and still wanted to play him, so he would queue up, get into a diamond game, and spend time collecting his passive. But by the time he transformed, the game would already be over. He needed a new strategy to get form much faster, and that led him to top lane. In season 9, Jakumi joined the South Korean army as part of their compulsory military service, so his climb was a bit delayed. That was until his unit received received a single PC to play games on for relaxation time, so for a very short amount of time each week he could play Kane Top. I assume it was probably in front of a crowd of soldiers who were all in silver. In Season 11, now out of the army, Kane has still been facing another year of tough jungle matchups, so he turned back to top lane once again, inventing a new playstyle with lots of new strategies and climbing all the way to master tier. Now let me show you why Kane Top is so good. So Kane top lane is basically the ideal place to be for the champion, since he is a jungler he can be roaming around the map using the crazy mobility of his E, so if he's ever in a bad matchup, he doesn't even need to go near them. He can play like a Talon, clear his wave, and then run away just to win the game through another lane. But the other benefit is that he can be in a lane, constantly trading back and forth with another champion, building up his passive transformation stacks very quickly. This early trading works so well because of how strangely strong Kane is in early lane. At level 1, Jakumi takes his Q and stands in this bush. As Kane level 1, you are strong enough to go for a huge trade when the enemy walks up to the first wave. Kane Q is very high damage and your auto attacks are strong, but mostly Jakumi relies on the corrupting potion Time Warp Tonic combo. This is an incredibly powerful combo that is really common in Korea. It means you can start to take any trade and use the potion to instantly gain 60 health per charge while also getting the bonus damage. He basically cannot lose a fight at level 1, often even getting a free flash. There's very little risk to this play. This trade is always worth going for because it gets him past passive stacks and sets up his level 2. At level 2, Jakumi takes his E and uses it to regen any health he has lost at level 1. Junglers like Kane are designed to have a built-in healing tool to get through the jungle, so when you take it into lane you can just use it over and over again and never need to base. He can always back off and regen a huge chunk of health after any trade. Jakumi pushes the wave easily using his AoE Q and invades the enemy's jungle to get vision. He wards the enemy buff to give him full information of where the enemy jungler is at that moment, as well as safety for if they try and gank him in the next minute and a half. So then, at level 3, he is completely safe from ganks. He takes his W and goes for more short trades to maximise his passive charge. Once that jungle ward dies, you might think he is now vulnerable to ganks in a long lane like top. 
but for that he has a special strategy. If Jakumi ever gets ganked, he has his E ready to avoid it. He simply activates it and runs into a wall, far out of range of any top lane skill shots. If there is a wall anywhere near him, he is safe, always having an escape route. When he's trading in lane, he can also use his E like a free spell shield. If the enemy top has CC, he can quickly jump into a wall to dodge it, returning after it's gone with even more health to continue the fight. Or he even uses it to overextend to stay in XP range without having any risk. There's even a special trick he does constantly that extends the range of this ability. When Kane is in combat, the duration of the skill goes down to 1.5 seconds, so it sounds like a pretty big nerf to your escape that will get you killed. But Jakumi is actually able to use this disadvantage to create a free flash. If he is inside a wall when the duration runs out, Kane is instantly pushed out to the closest side. So it looks like Jakumi is messed up and is about to get thrown out, but in reality he has gained extra distance to escape from enemies, so can often avoid dying in a 2 vs 1. He moves just slightly towards the direction he wants to escape, and with some practice is consistently able to jump to the correct side. This play is vital, as he often doesn't even take flash. Ignite TP is his go-to for Red Kane. These summoners mean that in any top lane 1 vs 1, he will have the best 1v1 summoner spell thanks to the Ignite, but he can still teleport bot lane to join any fight there as well. Red Kane specifically doesn't need flash because he has his Q dash and E to escape bad situations, and he is tanky enough to do so. He also takes Conqueror so he can force early fights and win 1v1. But teleporting is just as important for Blue Kane, where he takes Flash TP, and uses the teleport to get bot lane, get some kills, start getting ahead, and start snowballing. The Flash here is more important since Blue Kane is so squishy. He also takes Summon Airy in lane to avoid all 1v1 fights, instead just going for poke to build up his form. If you can TP away and win an early fight, it's sort of like you get a double advantage. You get the gold advantage as usual, but then you also get your form faster. I mentioned his love of roaming, especially in bad matchups. Using his E, Jikumi is able to move around the map much faster than the enemy top laner. Similar to a Talon, he can break the rules of League and go through wall after wall to reach a fight. There are so many good walls you can go through to set up kills, like this one mid lane that allows him to get right on top of enemies for a free kill. After he's got a lead for his team, he then runs back top lane to catch his wave. He can even use his E to get back to lane quickly, running through the base wall at maximum range to ensure he is never missing any CS. Choosing your transformation on Kane top is really simple, it's way easier than choosing on jungle. Jungle Kane needs to consider who he's able to gank, and then take a gamble on if his laner is reliable enough for those ganks to work, but top Kane is different. He can just choose form based on what is best to kill the enemies that game, and can start getting charged for it right at level 1. This is especially easy, for example if he wants red form to fight against tanks, and he is laning against a melee tank. He will get it really quickly from fighting in lane. If the enemy top lane is a squishy ranged top laner, then he'll probably want blue form so he can one-shot them, and again he can get it really quickly from all the trading. Even in the worst of games where he's died loads of times, he should have form by 12 minutes, ready to start fighting. Mid game on Kane is all about split pushing. Kane wants to be in a side lane and shove the wave with his Q AoE. This makes the enemy top laner have to catch it and waste time, while Kane moves quickly through terrain to join his team, sideswiping into enemies to cause a fight 5 versus 4. This quick rotation gives them a player advantage, letting Kane win the fight quickly before the enemy top can even join. From here on, the two forms start to have different playstyles. In the side lane, Red Kane is able to take 1v1s in lots of matchups. For Jakumi, it's all about maximising his healing. With this form, you get 36% healing on all of your damage, you have a Gore Drinker, and you have a ton of healing on your ultimate, which scales with AD. Kane is one of the best champions at abusing this healing. Blue form, on the other hand, can take 1v1s in the side lane against squishy champions, but he also loves team fighting. In team fights, Jakumi's goal with either form he's picked is to, quote, never take an honest fight. So instead of being on vision, running into the enemies for a front to back team fight, Jakumi always goes around the side of enemies or flanks them to start a fight. Using his E, he can once again break the rules to get around enemies and force them into a bad choke point, stalling them for his team to arrive. On Blue Kane, he stays mobile, landing W to slow and only going in when he can kill someone, using his Q burst into ult for safety, where he waits for a second for his cooldowns to come back up and exits to finish off the kill. Red Kane also looks for these side on engages, but after he goes in, he returns to his backline to play as a peeling champion. Using his W, he harasses enemies, making sure that no dive champion is ever given time to kill his squishy teammates. Red Kane loves these retreating peeling fights because they make enemies run into his skill shots. It's kind of the opposite of Blue Kane, which you would only choose if enemies have squishy champions that you can dive and one-shot. Every game, Jakumi bans Camille, her 
her and Poppy are both champions you cannot beat and should dodge if you ever meet them, since they both have skills that deny your escapes. Urgot is another hard matchup because you want to get red form against him since he's tanky, but he counts as a ranged champion, so when you trade with him he gives you a ton of blue orbs, which delays the form that you want. For his top cane build, he starts Corrupting Potion every game for the early trading power and the combo with Time Warp Tonic. For red cane, his build is Gore Drinker for the AoE healing to stall fights, and Sterex Gauge second. He gets Plated Steel Caps always on red cane. Third item is Situational, either Death Stance against AD or Spirit Visage against lots of AP, with the usual Guardian Angel as his last item. But blue cane is definitely the weird build. He doesn't buy his mythic item first, instead buying Iron Spike Whip early on for wave clear into Tia and Yumu's Ghost Blade. Yumu's is good because it gives him extra movement speed when he's roaming around the map for picks. Ionian Boots are his go-to on blue cane as assassins love low cooldowns to outplay enemies. If he needs more damage to guarantee his one-shots, he buys another AD assassin item, and then finally finishes Gore Drinker as his mythic. His tier then builds into Mana Moon for his crazy scaling build. His runes are also different for each form, with red going the classic Conqueror style, and the blue form going for a summon airy poke build, but both of them have the same secondaries with this OP combo. Jakumi actually streams on Twitch and has a YouTube channel, both of them are linked in the description. Thanks again to Porofessor for sponsoring this video, check them out as well, link below. Thanks so much for watching.